everyone, welcome to my Vegan Till Evening 30 Day Challenge. I'm at day 22. I'm going to go right into the recipe because I have to get the fuck out of here pretty soon. So I was lucky enough to come across some fresh beets, beetroot as we call it in Australia. And I know that's not exciting for most of you, but when you live in a place called Sendai in Japan, it's pretty fucking exciting because we cannot buy fresh beets here. So my beautiful Ukrainian friend Anna, thank you Anna, um, hooked me up with the beet, um, the beet thing online and she ordered some for me. Now, this is like a handful size. Uh, I'm not sure how many grams, I should have checked I suppose. And this is 500 yen, which is the equivalent of, you know, give or take five, say five dollars. This one also is the same price, five bucks. So, you know, they are pretty expensive. If you consider a can of beetroot, here's about two, three dollars. Um, you double it for one fresh one. So price wise, there you go. Uh, fresh beets, I think I haven't used a fresh beet in maybe two or three years. So I'm onto this, you know, and because of all my Russian, my gorgeous Russian friends, I've, um, yeah, I've learned a few recipes from them, but any recipe I do, I'm going to put my twist on it because for starters, it's whatever I cook, it's going to be vegan. So I can honestly say I have never ever in my life tasted the Russian soup borscht. Uh, so I have no idea what it tastes like, what it's supposed to take, taste like, but I know what goes into it. So. Yeah, and um, people tell me that it's a bit on the salty side, a bit on the sweet side. Um, the sweetness coming from <clears throat> the gorgeous beets. So yeah, I, this is my take on the Russian soup board. So have a look at it. I hope you enjoy the recipe. To prepare the fresh beets, I just washed them and scrubbed them with the brush and cut the tops off and basically you just, you're just going to bake them in an oven wrap them in some foil and these will roast for about one hour in a 200 degree celsius 400 fahrenheit oven when you get to about the 50 minute mark just pierce them with a fork to check if they're um, if the fork goes in easily then you'll know that they're soft and done so ready for baking my beets are just out of the oven and because they're a little bit on the large side they actually took one hour and a half to cook at 200 degrees so depending on the size you might need to keep them in longer and you just want to let them cool down a bit peel them and then they're ready for using in your favorite recipe I just peeled and chopped my freshly roasted beets and just wanted to show you the color look how beautiful Honestly, if you've never tried uh, roasting beets, you definitely should. A little bit difficult to get hold of in Japan, but you can find them on the internet. So, yes, yeah, ready to use. You can also freeze these in a Ziploc bag once they're chopped, peeled and chopped. And yeah, ready to enjoy. For the Russian soup, the borscht, you're going to need about a quarter of a cabbage, 200 grams, one large carrot diced, five or six sliced mushrooms. I have some onion, one large onion diced, and three large potatoes diced. I also have in here some celery. It's probably at the bottom somewhere. One stick of celery that is also, here we go, one stick of celery also diced. I'm going to add 50 grams of peas. I'm using frozen peas today. 100 grams of pasta sauce. Now you'll see that there's a little bit of oil in the pasta sauce. Today I'm using ready-made pasta sauce. Make sure it's vegan. Mine definitely is vegan. 100 grams. So because there's a little bit of oil in the pasta sauce, I'm not adding any extra oil to this dish at all. If you like, this is an option, uh, half a teaspoon of dried sliced chili. And now for the seasoning, it's very simple. One to two teaspoons of vegetable stock. I'm going to put two teaspoons today because there is quite a lot of volume here. 
I'm also going to add three teaspoons or one tablespoon of paprika. The paprika I'm using is actually roasted, dried roasted paprika, which is beautiful. Also, I'm going to add dill. If you have fresh, it's going to be better to use fresh. I couldn't find fresh today, so I'm going to add one teaspoon of dried dill. And to start, 400 mils of water. Give this a nice mix. And one bay leaf goes in. One more ingredient I forgot was the celery seeds. The celery seeds will add a lot of flavour, so definitely do add half a teaspoon of celery seeds and cover the pot, bring to a boil. Should take about five minutes. The soup has come to a boil. It took about five minutes. Now we're going to add the roasted beets that I prepared. One whole beet goes in and you just want to check for the liquid and see how you're doing. I can tell that in my pot you can see that I'm lacking liquid and it's going to evaporate very quickly so I will add another 200 mils of water. Oh, this is just smelling so divine. Give it another quick mix and now you want to turn the heat down to as low as possible so that we can get it on a simmer. Cover again, but make sure that you leave an opening here for the steam to escape. And we're going to simmer that for about 20 to 30 minutes. The soup is really starting to look spectacular. As you can see, the vegetables are cooked. It's simmered for about 25 to 30 minutes overall. And now you're just going to check for seasoning. I have noticed that mine does need a little bit more salt, so some more salt, a little bit of pepper to taste, and I'm going to add some sliced olives, black olives today, and here's my little trick whenever I make Russian borscht, I like to add some chopped relish pickles, see that? I'm going to put two tablespoons in. This, just for me, absolutely lifts the dish and just makes it even more delish. So those last two ingredients go in last, the olives and the pickles, and now we are ready for plating. My borscht is ready and just, honestly, it just smells so gorgeous. I haven't done anything difficult as you saw, and this is a beautiful way to enjoy some nice beets. So there you go, Russian borscht. One of the best soups I have ever tried. Hope you enjoy it too. So that's the Russian borscht, uh, the vegan version or the Lillian version of it. And it, it is such a gorgeous soup. I just, I love this. I usually use the canned beetroot and if you are using canned beetroot, I would add the juice and the actual beet uh, beetroot that comes from the can, so don't waste any of it. That liquid's really sweet and it will, you know, add a lot of flavour to your soup. Vegetable-wise, you can put anything in it. Um, I add a lot of mushrooms when I have them. I also add chickpeas or kidney beans. So, yeah, you can um, you can do it however you like, and just open up your fridge and clean it out because the one of the beauties of making soups is that really anything goes. I, when I know that I have to use some vegetables pretty fast, the first thing I think of is, you know, a soup and yeah, a soup's a good way to use up things in your fridge. Don't waste food, whatever you do, you know, don't waste food. There's just so much waste going on and you don't have to do it in your kitchen. So only buy what you can use, buy fresh, keep it keep it all fresh, keep it all nice and light and clean and yeah, get some healthy stuff into you. So it's Wednesday night here and uh, the beetroot, I've got two more. So I'm going to uh, do some more beet recipes in the next couple of days. So looking forward to seeing you next time. Have a great night guys and uh, catch you later. Bye.